From a curiosity that sparked in 2019 to a mission-driven journey, Sandraput Vedanti's passion for renewable energy has led him to make a real impact. A journey that began by providing solar lanterns to students in rural India, ensuring their studies continued unhindered. With computer and energy engineering experts attending cutting-edge conferences and researching solar technologies, Santraput is focused on merging technical skills with business acumen to drive global sustainability. I think um, energy engineering is definitely a very important uh, subject of uh, discussion in today's times, especially the whole world is focusing on sustainability, looking at alternate source of uh, energy and governments are coming up with uh, new acts, uh, new subsidies uh, to promote uh, alternate energy and I think uh, even Oman is moving towards uh, looking at sustainable forms of energy such as green hydrogen, solar, we keep reading a lot about in the news and I think this has been a major strategic uh, focus for most of the nations across the globe, especially you have the COP28 that happened in UAE and you have the Inflation Reduction Act that's happening in the US where they are focusing on promoting alternate energy forms because the, the natural resources that we have cannot be replenished. And more than that, the important aspect is to reduce the carbon emissions then in the environment. So for that, you need more sustainable form of energy, sustainable action to be taken place and policies that support sustainability in a large scale. And I think that is why we see that alternate energy or energy engineering plays a very key role in the economy. Absolutely, I think uh, from my time when I was uh, doing my IB program in uh, ABA, I was always very inquisitive towards alternate energy, solar, how they worked and how is it important for the country and why everybody is focusing on topics like these and then Something struck to me, I was a musician, I used to perform a lot and then I used to get remuneration from that and I always had one philosophy saying that I should use these funds for something that is useful and helpful to communities that are in dire need of uh, resources. So then something struck my mind saying why don't I give solar lanterns to students in rural areas in India. And I started this uh, with the village from where my family comes from, uh, it's called Gaudgere in Bangalore, in Karnataka. So um, I called in a couple of uh, school students. I saw what they were actually, what they needed. Uh, was it books, pens or anything? And then they, the, the something they told me was interesting was they said, we need some sort of a light source that helps us to study during night times due to the frequent power cuts uh, in the area. So I said, okay, the, definitely this is something that is important. And then that's when I realized the solar lantern. I said, this is something that is very helpful. You keep it outside the cells get charged and then the light runs in the night and this is something that students will definitely encash from and uh, it will help them educate themselves more and sometime in the future they will realize that I gave a lantern like this and they might do the same good deed to someone in the locality so I thought uh, this is something that is unique and it is also a good way to promote uh, the importance of uh, alternate energy uh, among my friends among the generation that we have saying we should look at other forms of energy and because as human beings we are morally responsible to keep our environment safe and sound for the future generation so for that sustainable options are the reliable options and also the most important uh, thinking that should be inculcated in today's uh, generation <music> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, music has uh, been uh, my, my like, I can say a place where I can express my emotions or uh, uh, it helps me to think better, to be more creative uh, with what I do. And I have been uh, learning music from a very tender age of uh, three. That's when my interest started. And I play almost about 25 different types of percussion instrument. And uh, I have completed all eight grades of uh, drumming certification from Trinity College of London. And uh, I, have, I'm, I can say I, I'm, I was blessed that I got a lot of opportunities to play with many stalwarts uh, from uh, the music industry, A.R. Rahman, uh, Shivamani and uh, Prankar Mahadev. And I also had the opportunity to make an album uh, with the Grammy Award winning artist from India, Dr. Prakash Santake, who is my mentor. I 
I consider him because he showed me the importance of uh, how music uh, can create um, it, it, the magic in everyone's mind. And uh, so, and also the album that we did, it was called as Palasampada. And uh, that album focused on uh, showing the world the importance of water. So whatever sales we had from the music album, we all gave that uh, for good causes where there were a lot of NGOs who were showing the importance of uh, how to preserve the water bodies and to educate people about water scarcity. And uh, this is a very important topic as well. So that was the reason. So most of my work that I do, whatever remunerations I get from music or anything, I try to keep that aside uh, and use them for uh, community service. And I think this is one thing that has been instilled in my family, uh, which is a very important uh, value that first thing is to give back to the society uh, and uh, be always uh, good to the society. So that is uh, that is how music has been for me. It is not a business perspective. It is more like uh, something that I love and it is something that I want to spread. So using music, I also... Uh, did a lot of concerts for cancer patients so to, uh, to raise awareness for uh, uh, the cancer causes in Oman and in India uh, to show the importance of uh, why you need to get uh, the proper treatment, uh, why palliative care is very important. And uh, there were a lot of, uh, lot of people who loved music and I knew that music was something where people affected by cancer could take their minds off. Uh, because see, I've always believed that uh, I cannot add... Uh, or days to their uh, life. Um, I, the only thing I can do is add life to whatever days they have to make their each day something special, something unique. This is something that is I always tell people that as a musician, we cannot add uh, days to their life, but we can add life to their particular day. As a musician. So, as a musician, as a human being. And I think uh, this is music in a nutshell for me. And as a musician, I think everybody... It's a very creative art and people who are into it uh, definitely have a blessing of uh, creating magic. So I think uh, that definitely helped me personally and also professionally. So this, this is a very interesting topic, uh, Chalcogenite perovskites, which was introduced to me uh, by my professor, Dr. Nelson. Uh, I have to uh, commend him, Dr. Nelson Zade. He's a... I think he's a great professor and I, I always uh, tell students that you should always have a teacher like him in your education uh, because he's one such uh, man who uh, promotes uh, the student's interest and uh, he's not uh, like uh, the typical professor where things are monotonous. You see him bring a small change in his uh, teaching and I think uh, when I took his uh, class for uh, solar uh, uh, cells and solar structure and uh, designing of solar panels in university towards my senior year before graduation uh, he changed uh, the course structure where it was very unique uh, it was not like the typical way of saying you go to a class at the certain time you learn and then you have an exam you write about it end of semester you forget what you studied no so what he did was he assigned projects uh, made small groups of students assigned projects to them he contacted uh, local communities uh, who wanted to get the solar panel designed. And this was like a project for us. So why I say this was important for me personally is because one thing you learn communication with your clients at a young age before you when you head out for industry. Second thing you learn about how to do the technical stuff, how to design a, a panel structure, learn about the softwares. The third thing is how do you make a contract technicalities and details of uh, understanding why you need a certain product, how you're going to convince the client. So all these things, like practical knowledge, are very important for engineers who are, of course, we will be starting our careers at some, uh, at some point when we graduate. So it is very important learning. And when I was doing that class, I knew that he had a research uh, group uh, called the Mineral and Materials Theory Group. It was a research group focusing on material sciences. And uh, I just uh, said, uh, doctor, I want to be a part of the research because I'm very much interested in what you're doing. He said to come in and join. And uh, he guided me through the whole process of what is chalcogen chalcogenite perovskite, where chalcogen elements such as sulfur, selenium, or terillium are uh, replaced uh, uh, 
uh, replacing the oxygen in the perovskite structure. He taught me the basics and then he assigned me an um, element such as barium hafnium sulfide on which I did my research. And then I was inquisitive asking him saying, why are you looking at this particular topic? And then he told me the benefits. He said, you know, these materials are very good in uh, absorption of light. They have great um, electric properties. Uh, they are very good. Uh, uh, they have very good sensor uh, properties as well. So when he started telling me all these things, then I realized, OK, I have to do some research and understand why this material is important and how it will impact the society. So one thing it was for my personal learning and the other thing was how it will benefit the society. As engineers, they always say engineers, doctors, everybody, all the professions play an important role and engineers, when we are learning engineering, our professors always say that you all have a very big responsibility of making sure you build strong, good, reliable uh, infrastructure for the community. I, 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 when I was doing my energy engineering, uh, we got a very good amount of exposure in all forms of renewables, um, solar, wind, thermal, geothermal, and uh, which, hydro, which is another important one. So as a student, uh, they teach us everything. And uh, when you're learning all these uh, subjects, I, I mean, when you're learning them in detail, when you're learning, when you're looking, scrutinizing the technicalities, of every form of energy okay. I mean as a student automatically you will have a favorite one and uh, all of them do the same thing uh, it's just that the mode of uh, doing uh, the operation is just different hydro water solar light wind turbines are for wind thermal and geothermal you have the coal which generates and geothermal is of course a completely different area of uh, uh, work and I think uh, these areas are definitely very fascinating and there are a lot of people who focus on different things but solar was something I probably because being born and uh, raised in Oman um, and you know countries blood, Middle East is blessed with uh, a big uh, amount of uh, daylight hours so I think uh, that was something that always interested uh, me saying oh this country has tremendous uh, sunlight and uh, we can put in solar panels and then you know that's how I think fascinated me but I always uh, even now currently I'm reading a lot uh, about green hydrogen technologies about the electrolyzers um, you know looking at the technical uh, specifications about different types of electrolyzers in the industry different projects that's going across the globe and I think uh, learning never ends so now I'm looking at uh, green hydrogen for a specific uh, a report that I'm trying to come up with and uh, I think uh, it, whenever you read a lot more material on things like that uh, you get fascinated so I I started off with solar cells uh, material science research now I'm doing green hydrogen and uh, so you know it's something you learn every day but of course I will have a passion towards uh, solar cells because it is something that everybody looks at very fast in terms of infrastructure to apply for because green hydrogen is uh, in the research stage uh, of course there are a lot of electrolyzers that have been built by big companies that have come up with a lot of projects but you know there are always pros and cons for every technology that you come up with so but as of now yes green hydrogen does have its benefits a lot of lot of uh, funding going on across the globe for the companies to focus on research of making cost-effective electrolyzers so that the retail costs for uh, the hydrogen uh, per kg will be reduced because right now it's slightly higher than our uh, ice engine gasoline or stuff or uh, uh, you know the regular uh, uh, energy resources we have like oil and gas but uh, hydrogen rates are slightly up now but I think within a span of uh, we are not very far 2030 we might see them matching up um, with the gasoline so that's why you see a lot of automobile companies are doing uh, extensive uh, research on building engines that support hydrogen the green hydrogen especially uh, because green hydrogen definitely there is absolutely zero carbon emission in the process when you look at it because the electrolyzers everything are power the facilities powered by renewables like solar or wind and uh, there is no carbon emission at all so in terms of sustainability wise it's it's the best technology but the only thing 
right now is the pricing strategies that are going on for it. But we are not very far. We are 2024. By 2030, you will see a big, big change even for green hydrogen. So as we move on, I think by 2050, I know a lot of countries have committed towards uh, net zero emissions by 2050. So I think uh, the renewables is definitely uh, the future, the path for mankind.